A blanket of fog covers areas in the valley, leaving us a bit dreary. But soon enough, it will become a blanket of snow. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Krista Bame. It's been a gloomy day out there as we continue to hide under dense fog. It will make it more of a challenge for drivers in some spots as you look ahead to your morning commute. Justin Fanfarelli joins us early tonight to show us when that fog will clear on out of here along with a look ahead to some snow. Justin? Thank you, Krista, and good evening, everybody. Well, the good news is, in the Fargo and Grand Forks metro area, the National Weather Service has canceled its dense fog advisory, but that's not the case as you make your way into central North Dakota. Some of the worst fog we've been seeing is out toward the Devil's Lake area. Now, the county is outlined in gray here in a dense fog advisory until 11 a.m., and you can see this stretches across most of North Dakota with the exception of the Williston area, and we are seeing uh, maybe some freezing fog conditions, especially where it is below freezing, especially out toward the central and western portion of the state. Still above freezing, pretty nice temperatures here into the Fargo area, and we're going to keep those temperatures into the lower 30s as we go through the early overnight period. Uh, fog not really a problem into the Fargo area, but cloudy skies will remain. I'll tell you when the uh, snow will be here coming up a little later on in the newscast. All right, thank you, Justin. With road conditions on your mind, now to a new transportation bill the president signed in the nick of time, just hours before the old one expired. It includes something you may not have realized. It allows some 18, 19, and 20-year-olds to drive big rigs across state lines, a concern for safety advocates. Just last year in North Dakota, there were 49 people who died in a truck-involved crash, and in Minnesota, 66. That added to the nearly 4,000 truck fatalities last year. And safety advocates worry this bill could open the door to all teen truck drivers crisscrossing the country. Tracy Potts has more. Darrell Jones has been driving trucks since he was 18. It's not just yourself you're looking out for. You know, as far as when you're driving, you got to watch all the drivers and motorists around you. Before this month, 48 states licensed young truck drivers as long as they stayed within state lines. The new highway bill allows 18 to 20 year olds to cross state lines if they learn to drive in the military. It's a dumb idea. Why are we letting them drive when we see these studies that show that they have four to six times the fatal crash rates of more experienced and older drivers? Jones' boss says where they drive isn't the point. I still don't understand what the difference is in crossing a state line. If they're safe to drive in the state, they should be safe to drive out of the state. Safety is a concern. Advocates say on average, 10 people die every day in truck accidents, and it's usually the people in the other vehicle who get killed. They want more safety studies. Truck companies want more drivers. There are nearly three and a half million now. Industry leaders predict they'll need to hire 890,000 drivers over the next decade to keep up with growth and to replace retirees. As long as the companies, you know, keep an eye on those young drivers and they give them that proper training, I think, I think it'll be just fine. Turning to teens and letting them drive longer distances could give drivers like Jones some help and get your food, clothes, and electronics from the factory to the store. Tracy Potts, NBC News. Jones says training and supervision and strong oversight by trucking companies is the key to young drivers operating safely. Single ticket sales opened at 2 this afternoon to see the Bison take on Richmond this Friday. Those can only be purchased online at the link that's on your screen there. The season ticket deadline to purchase is 5 p.m. on Tuesday. The unclaimed season and student tickets left over will go on sale Wednesday at 8 a.m. You can catch kickoff on ESPN2 Friday at 7. A local Episcopal church we met with just a few weeks ago has decided it will recognize and allow same-sex marriages. Members of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Fargo met today about their decision after the Episcopalian leader in the state says he would not support same-sex marriage. After January 1st, Bishop Carol Gallagher will now have direct Episcopal oversight of their congregation. She will visit St. Stephen's on an annual basis, despite the U.S. Episcopal Church voting overwhelmingly to allow same-sex marriages in the church back in July. Church leaders at St. Stephen's voted unanimously to recognize all marriages without distinction. 
The church adds that they will continue to have a personal relationship with Bishop Smith. And if you're heading to downtown Fargo this week, there are a few road closures to look out for. Starting on tomorrow morning at 8.30, the southbound lane on Broadway North will close between 7th and 8th Avenues North. Crews will work on the skywalk in front of Sanford. The roadway should open back up by 4.30 p.m., but crews will then be out again on Tuesday, closing the northbound lane to finish that project. And you can also expect 3rd Avenue North to be closed between 10th and 11th Streets North. That will remain closed for about a week while a contractor unloads materials for the construction of a nearby building. Holy Cross Catholic Church is getting you in the holiday spirit with their Christmas cantata. The performance of A Breath of Heaven included our very own Kyle Bosch and Lisa Badeau narrating along with the sounds of the season by an orchestra, vocal and bell choir. All donations from this concert are directly used for the music department. The season of giving can be hard on those who don't have much. For those who need extra help, police stepped in and helped check off their wish list one item at a time. Local kids were selected by school counselors and principals in Fargo-Moorhead and paired up with an officer. Valley News Team's Christine Stanwood follows an unlikely pair around Walmart and sees how the gift of service is truly priceless. This is my first time, too. Getting the jitters can be tough on anyone. Shopping with a cop and being on TV. Especially for fifth grader Bradley. Why don't you go with him? Okay. okay. You got it. How are you doing? Good. My name is Chris. What's your name? I'm Bradley. Hi, Bradley. You got a high five? All right. You got a list? We know what we're going to get today? Except... Bradley wasn't expecting to be questioned by Officer Potter. Okay, so where are we going first, buddy? Um, I'm going to go for my dad. Okay, where are we going for that? Um, let's go to the sports section. Question. How about, how old's your cousin, 11? After question. Does he like trucks and matchbox cars and things? Even Bradley wasn't afraid to interrogate Officer Potter. You think about retiring soon? Oh, no, probably not for another 9 or 10 years. Strolling through the aisles of Walmart, the duo relied on a budget of $75. Bradley had the option of spending that money on himself, but he chose to put loved ones first. Okay, our budget allows us about 15 more dollars, okay? So you haven't gotten anything for yourself or your cousin yet. Even if the mission calls for shopping for women, this team is on it. Here's one. Perfect. It says mother on it, too. Oh, my gosh. Look at all the cool colors it has. With such a big family, Bradley says his wish list isn't about him. My brother, my other brother, my dad wants. What do you want? Yeah. I'm... I don't really care. Helping kids like Bradley is just one of the reasons Officer Potter says he looks forward to his favorite day every year. Gratitude is an amazing thing. And uh, when we can spread some of that cheer around and, and take the time to add to their lives a little bit, it makes us feel good too. And, and those kids are learning a valuable lesson that, that giving is far more important than receiving. In Fargo, Christine Stanwood, Valley News Live. Shop with a Cop has been a wonderful tradition for the last 21 years. With officers from Fargo and West Fargo Police Departments, along with the Cass County Sheriff's Department and the North Dakota Highway Patrol.